My friends at Lyric Theater have some cool stuff going on. Two shows, not one, but two shows in rep, I am told. I don't know what that means, but these two people will tell us exactly what it means, which is probably pretty obvious. <laughs> uh, Renee Anderson and uh, Matthew Alvin Brown. Renee, we've had a few interviews here. Good to see you again. I have not met you. Uh, you're fired up, though, I can tell as you walked in. Uh, great to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you, man. Congrats on the shows, which are both underway. Lyric Theater at the Plaza District. Um, what does that mean in rep? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, well. Over to you, Matt. <laughs> I got it. Uh, so uh, this is the first time in Lyric's history, I believe, that uh, two shows are happening at the same time. How is this possible? How is it possible? It's the magic of theater. The magic of theater, right? <laughs> uh, no, uh, James and the Giant Peach goes up in the daytime. Okay. And then I go up in the nighttime. Literally you, because you're one man show, right? There is one, only one actor. One actor, okay. How does that work? Um, it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know how it works. It, uh, it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's, I play a whole bunch of characters. I just get out there and go, and uh, I talk to myself a lot. There Boom, are. there you are. Is that me? Oh, look at that. That is all kinds of you. Oh, yeah, and I'm wearing a dress the whole time, <laughs> too. So you are in I Am My Own Wife, which started on Wednesday. We are recording this on Friday. How has it gone so far? It's really, uh, it's, it's going very well. Um, it's Aside a, from it being hard. <laughs> it's, no, it's cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly, uh, as an actor, it's probably the most challenging thing I've ever had to tackle. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's really cool. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. It was a really intense process putting it together. And, um, uh, and Michael Barron, the director, and I, I got to work um, pretty closely for uh, a couple of weeks. Um, putting it, putting it up, and uh, man, we're we're going. How many characters do you play? Like thirty-six. How do you do that? How do you remember? How do I? I, I you know, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, it's, um, you know, I've spent like all day long, uh, you know, come leading up to the rehearsal process, um, just taking the script section by section literally sentence by sentence over and over and over again. I would do that during the daytime and then at night we'd rehearse and then uh, it was kind of like a little baby bird. Eventually it just kind of Do you flew. have any sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, cues, key points on stage to kind of keep you yeah, yeah, to keep me on track, sure, yeah. I've got little Because I'd be putting notes everywhere, like... <laughs> There's notes everywhere, and, and Renee can tell you, like, because when they do their show, we, we share the same stage, obviously, because we're in rep, which mm. you now know means... Yes. Ah. Yeah. Right, right. Um, <laughs> dropping knowledge right now. <laughs> so she gets to see all of my little notes, so I've got, you know, like, sometimes I'll not remember that I have to say death certificate at this point, so, like, there's just a happy little... Death certificate. Just <laughs> randomly. Those were interesting to find now, backstage <laughs> during our show process. Now, Renee, you guys are pros. You're focused. You would you ever? I think so. Would you are ever? I, I don't know if we are. Or not. Would you ever prank one of his props? Oh no! No, not, no. not, not to this guy. Because <laughs> that would get you back so bad. He would. Yeah, he totally would. How does it work sharing stage when you're in rep? This, a meaning set design and all that. How was how was that working? It, how does it work? I think if you had told told me quite some time ago that we were going to be sharing the same set, I wouldn't know how that was going to be done. But it's beautifully done. Yeah, the shows are so different, but uh, but this and it's really interesting because you look at the set and when when I'm in there, when I'm on the stage in in the dress doing all of that, and the the lighting is very dark and moody. Um, it looks you know like a very serious documentary play about this character's rich. Uh, intriguing life, and then you see this beautiful fantasy magical show on the on, on the same set with all of the colorful characters. Um, I don't know how it works, but it, it totally it does. does. Once again, the magic theater. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Uh, Matt, real fast, let's set it up. What is I Am My Own Wife about? Uh, I Am My <laughs> Own Wife is a play about um, this this character, this person, this, this historical person who lived through the Nazi times and the communist times in East Berlin as a, as a woman, uh, was, was, born, was born a male, but identified as a woman from a very early age. And uh, her name is Charlotte von Malsdorf. And it's about, it's about her life, but it's also about the writing of the play. Um, and so I play the author of the play and I play Charlotte and all of the other characters, and it's uh, it's just a really interesting portrait of a fascinating character um, 
that not a lot of people know about. And um, huh. it's pretty relevant <clears throat> to what's going on today as far as um, issues that are concerning a lot of people, uh, as far as, you know, um, homophobia, um, anti-Semitism, all of those really heavy, cheery topics. <laughs> but don't worry, James and the Giant Peach is on in the <laughs> evening. <laughs> In the morning. Oh, in the morning. Yeah. Sorry. Well, and, and that's a great segue there of, of the shows that run simultaneously through <laughs> April 9th. Sorry, Dave. You got the night shift, and you are entertaining during the day. Yes. In uh, James and the Giant Peach. And mm -hmm. what is that about? Oh, my gosh. Aside from the giant orange umbrellas. Uh, yes. Um, in a nutshell, the Cliff Notes version, it's about an orphaned boy who is sent to live with his atrocious aunts, as the script calls them. Ooh. And they, he actually, James stumbles upon this strange man. It kind of sounds crazy, this story. <laughs> strange man that tells him to uh, eat crocodile tongues. Yeah, when you say it out loud. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it sounds very psychedelic and uh, a little crazy. Um, and James and willingly. He t yep. Well, of course. Well, he, he's going to, and then it spills onto this peach, this barren peach tree, and it grows a peach. And then the ants sell tickets to their neighbors to come see this big um, eighth wonder of the world. Here's and an opportunity to monetize this situation. I know, and, it's, <laughs> and he gets uh, sucked into this world of the, of the peach, and he meets these creatures that have also eaten the crocodile tongues, and they go on this big whimsical adventure cool. through the ocean and New York City, and yeah, oh, there we are. Sounds like a fun time, though. Yeah, it's um, a great story written by... Um, I pronounce his name correctly. Rolled Doll. Sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in fact. But he also wrote Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Okay. And Matilda. Um, BFG. A, and BFG. And, and the other. Orange umbrellas aforementioned. Yes. And um, they use a very creative way to build the the peach with umbrellas as it grows bigger. And you play Spiker. I play Spiker. Who, I'm right who, there or in, may I say, what, I'm in the pink who, robe there. Who's, who's Spiker and what's the Spiker role? Spiker is one of the two atrocious ants. Oh, I get no. to play, I get to play evil again. Was well, that fun? Absolutely. Okay. Who doesn't want to play evil? You want to play the, the villain. It's, it's fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she is um, the, one of the atrocious ants and kind of the, the mastermind of the two. And she's not very nice. It's a very uh, funny show, so there's a lot of funny comedic moments in the show, but they are definitely not nice. <laughs> well, James and the Giant Peach and I Am My Own Wife run at Lyric Theater. It's the Plaza District. Both of these shows run through April 9th. Now, I need to point out, though, that uh, something very cool is happening during this, uh, both performances of something you're doing for, looking for the right word here, two sensory-friendly performances. What does this mean? Uh, we've uh, Lyric has teamed with Autism Oklahoma to provide two special performances for uh, children and families that might uh, have autism or they're on the spectrum. And so, what might change are lighting cues, sound cues. Um, they're going to be sensory friendly, so they can come and enjoy the theater. As so perhaps the theater's not should. quite as dark for the the shows or things like that. Exactly, and they are um, next Friday at eleven okay. and Saturday at ten a.m. I got it right. Fantastic! <laughs> Great job, Renee. <laughs> Thank That's you. Good job. <laughs> um, I remember seeing you were in Fiddler, right? Correct. Um, and I remember during that show, uh, two <clears throat> actors perhaps that were deaf. Correct. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Sunrise, Sunset, I actually saw the performance twice uh, and both times. It is amazing that during one of the choruses of Sunrise, Sunset, it just went completely silent. You heard nothing but perhaps the sound of some motion going on, and, and forgive me if that was a bad sign language there. Um, it was so effective. And what struck me is both times the audience stayed completely silent. Not a peep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. And, um, and on stage, we could feel it too. It was. It was one of those, Sam talking about it, uh, uh, hey, uh, I got the you know, <laughs> chills. chills. Um, but it was, it was such, a, such a beautiful, poignant, uh, uh, great moment. You talk about the, the magic of theater. That was one of those moments. It really was kind of cool. Which leads us to phone etiquette at the theater. Oh! It's good. What, what might be your recommendations for phone Turn it off. Just turn it <laughs> off. <laughs> OFF. Not on silent. 
Or you can just leave it in your car. Just leave it in the car? Yeah. I promise you Facebook is still going to be there. I promise you. <laughs> I promise it'll be there. I promise all those people that want to talk to you, I promise they'll wait. So, as creative as Michael Barron might be with all the audience-friendly things that he's doing, you would vote down any sort of uh, Snapchat filter that might lead people to use their phone in the theater. I'd say maybe just, just uh, you know, Shut off the outside world yeah. for a couple Come couple hours. And... Yeah, let's all escape together. <laughs> <laughs> or if it does go off, like try to get to it pretty immediately to turn it off. Just don't sit there like it's not happening. Just... Don't kick it down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> don't go. Hey guys, it's ringing. I, mean, I know you're working, but. Just wanted to let you know somebody wants to talk to me. Not only can you hear it, but now you can see, see the glow. Yep. <laughs> I mean, not like that has happened at all. Not we hear. Not that at all. We're just suggesting just that perhaps keep the phone silent. Now you know two things. You know about rep, and you know about cell, <laughs> cell phone etiquette. Turn it off. Yeah. This interview has gone full circle. <laughs> <laughs> You can see uh, Matthew Alvin Brown. He is in I Am My Own Wife. You can check out Renee Anderson. She is in uh, James and the Giant Peach. I'm looking down to make sure I get these right. Both at Lyric Theater at the Plaza. They're not at the Civic Center, at the Plaza through April 9th. Guys, I've enjoyed the conversation. Uh, break a leg? Is that the appropriate thing That's to it. say that at this point? That is the one. Yep. All right, this was fun. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.